Hi, this is Mrs. Kidman, and in this video, we're going to be discussing proofs for algebra. So in the previous videos, we've talked about different types of mathematical proofs, and we are going to be using a two-column proof here to demonstrate our information. Now, when we do a two-column proof, remember that on the left-hand side, we write our statement, which is kind of like the math that we always do. And on the right-hand side, we have to write our reason. And so we want to go through and write down our statements and our reasons here. So I'm going to start by writing down our given statement, 6x plus 3 equals 15. Now, why do I know that's true? Well, that was given to me. Now, what I want to do is ultimately figure out what is, why, like, how is x equal to 2? What do I have to do to show that x is equal to 2? Well, the very first thing we want to do when we do something like this is we subtract 3 from both sides. And so if I subtract 3 from both sides here, what I end up getting is 6x equals 12. Now, why does 6x equal 12? Well, what we want to do is we want to look at all of our different postulates and theorems to decide what's true. And we can do that by the subtraction property of equality. Now, the subtraction property of equality simply says that if the same number is subtracted from equal numbers, then the differences are equal. So I can subtract the same thing from both sides, and the statement is still true, is essentially what the subtraction property of equality tells us. So by subtracting 3 from both sides, this statement is equal to that statement. Great. Well, then the next thing we would do to solve this is divide both sides by 6. Now, once I divide both sides by 6, I get x equals 2. Now, why can I divide both sides by 6? Well, that's because of the division property of equality. And the division property of equality, just like the subtraction property of equality, says that if I have two things that are equal, I can divide both sides by the same number, and they'll still remain equal. And so we just gave our reasons to why we can do this. So x equals 2. Why? Well, if 6x plus 3 equals 15, by the subtraction property of equality, I can subtract 3 from both sides, leaving me with 6x equals 12. And then by the division property of equality, I can divide both sides by 6, and that leaves us with x equals 2. Awesome. So for everything that I do, I have a reason that lets me do it. Now let's take a look at another example with an algebra proof. So 10x plus 9 equals 7x. Perfect. Okay, so now let's look at our statement followed by our reason. Okay, so in this case, I have 10x plus 9 equals 7x. Well, why is that true? Because it was given to me. And then let's figure out, what do we do next? Well, the next thing we're going to do is I want to subtract 10x from both sides. So I have a 9 on one side and x on the other, right? And so I can subtract something from both sides by the subtraction property of equality. Now, if I subtract something, that 10x from both sides, what do I end up getting? Well, that's going to leave me with 9 equals negative 3x. And then by the division property, so there's our little thing here, by the division property of equality, I know, just like in the last problem, that I can divide both sides by negative 3 and end up getting x equals negative 3. Awesome. So these algebra proofs, really what we're doing is we're doing the same work that we always have done. But now we are going to assign a property or theorem that says it's okay for me to do this, just like we were taught. Why can I do this? Well, somebody in math proved at one point. Now, these are properties, so they're postulates, so they're things that we have, they're rules that we've established that everyone follows, is what a postulate is, that everyone follows this because that's what the rule says, we can do it. Now let's take a look at this one last example of an algebra proof. Now notice how, how this has stuff on both sides. Now that means this is going to have possibly a few more steps. So let's take a look. We've got our statement side and our reason side. So on the statement side, what we're going to do is we've got 4x plus 5 equals 7x plus 2. Now what we want to do with these is we actually want to combine things. So we know we have this because it is given to us. Now, how do we want to combine things? Well, I'm going to subtract 4x from both sides. And that means I end up with 5 equals 3x plus 2. Now, by subtracting 4x from both sides, how do I get this? Well, according to the subtraction property of equality, we know that we can subtract the same thing from both sides, and it's still going to be equal. Great. Now, what do we want to do next? Well, I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides. And so, again, by the subtraction property quality, we know that we can subtract the same thing from both sides. 
and that's how we end up getting 3 equals 3x. Three and then lastly, I want to divide both things by 3. And what does that result in? Well, x equals 3. So how does x equal, or x, not 3, eh, x equals 1. So how does x equal 1? Well, that's by the division property of equality. So here's how those algebra proofs or math proofs in general are going to work. We have a statement. And that statement side is usually what we always do. This is the math that I'm solving. These are the reasons why I think I'm true. I'm right. Then under the reason side, we have to justify why it's okay for us to do those things because mathematical proofs are based on logic. So if something happens, we have to have a reason why that can happen and it's a true thing. So that is how algebra proofs work. Please check out the future videos when we go over some different geometry proofs.